Welcome to On Investors Minds. I'm Kerry Craig, Global Market Strategist. Thanks for giving us a few minutes of your time to hear about what is on investors' minds and how it fits in with views on asset allocation and portfolio construction. In this episode, we will be looking at what we heard from the US Federal Reserve's November FOMC meeting and whether it changes our view on the rates outlook and asset allocation. There was no change from the Fed today as was widely expected, but the message was very clear. They're looking for validation. Validation that a downward shift in economic activity is coming after the strength in the third quarter. Validation that the labour market is returning to balance after a large jump in the non-farm payrolls for September, but an improvement in the supply side. And validation that the inflation pressures will continue to ease in the quarters ahead. We think the Fed will get clarity on this as it becomes clear that the impact of higher rates is weighing on activity of businesses and households, and the labour market continues its slow normalisation process. Now, the Fed was right to note today that the path back to that 2% inflation target is a bumpy one. The two-way risks around the outlook are quite clear. On the downside to inflation is the fact that both the US and the global economy are not strong enough to drive a surge in demand to push prices much higher. But on the upside to that inflation outlook is the fact that it will take time for the impact of things like rents, insurance, and other services-related inflation drivers that have been persistent to soften in the economic data. Now, the Fed has always classed itself as being data dependent and, if possible, made itself sound even more so as the FOMC assesses what it calls the totality of incoming data, which now specifically includes financial conditions as well as credit conditions. Tighter financial conditions would mitigate the need for further Fed action, but only if they are persistent in nature and being driven by factors other than simply the market repricing for higher policy rates. Should financial conditions ease as bond yields fall and the market moves away from pricing and further policy tightening or starts to think about earlier rate cuts, this may limit the impact of financial conditions to restrict economic activity and spur the Fed into action. However, the Fed may be of the view that it's the term premier rather than rate pricing which is driving yields, suggesting more persistence in the tightness and this could be a substitute for the need to tighten monetary policy. We will need to watch the movements in yields closely, given there's been a large fall in the US tenure following the FOMC meeting. Then there are the dots and the new set of economic forecasts we will get in December. The September dot plot suggested the median FOMC member was looking for another rate hike this year. Chair Powell noted the usefulness of this as an indicator for the direction of rates fades given the forecast change between meetings. We interpret this as an indication that September dots shouldn't be relied on as evidence that a December rate hike is coming. Overall, the cautious tone of Chair Powell in the press conference and the more positive view on the progress made on the trajectory of inflation suggest the FOMC has some degree of confidence that the current policy settings are restrictive enough to achieve their goals when combined with the tightening in financial conditions. Our view is that the US economy will slow into the new year and that the downward trend in the economy will see the Fed remain on hold in December and well into 2024. The increased macro uncertainty, the spiking in geopolitical risks now facing markets mean investors should be cautious, however, when taking large outsized positions. The ability for the US economy to deliver on a soft landing as growth slows narrowly avoids recession suggests that being neutral on equities rather than underweight but with a preference for quality companies and those with the ability to protect margins which are likely to be pressured by lower nominal economic growth and tighter financial conditions is a more prudent approach. However, fixed income markets are more appealing as we expect yields on core government bonds to retreat in the coming quarters as the markets reprice for the outlook for growth and a peak in policy rates. We'd extend this into investment grade credit where the yields are attractive even as spreads remain narrow. When it comes to the US dollar, we expect the dollar to restart its downward trend as the rate and growth differential shift in favour of other majors such as the yen and the euro, given their differing growth and inflation dynamics. However, we are cautious on when this decline may start given the potential flight to safety if geopolitical events again spike a risk off sentiment in markets. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share with your friends and colleagues and consider subscribing so not to miss future episodes. As always, if there are topics you'd like to hear from us, please reach out to your JP Morgan Asset Management representative.
This content is intended for information only, based on assumptions in current market conditions and are subject to change. No warranty of accuracy is given. This content does not contain sufficient information to support investment decisions. It is not to be construed as research, legal, regulatory, tax, accounting, or investment advice. Investments involve risks. Investors should seek professional advice or make an independent evaluation before investing. The value of investments and the income from them may fluctuate, including loss of capital. Past performance and yield are not indicative of current or future results. Forecasts and estimates may or may not come to pass. JP Morgan Asset Management is the asset management business of JP Morgan Chase and Company and its affiliates worldwide.